M0FXB welcome back to my videos on different USDR USDX devices today we've got this one I'm not sure if you've heard of it known as the QCX USDX 3 band transceiver so I'm just having a go at loading some different firmware on it actually not different original firmware that's been sent from the manufacturer and I've got my board here which I've been told to leave turned off do not connect to the power Found on the board there is a place where you can connect the, see if I can get it nice and clear to you, the pins from the Arduino Uno. So I, I did actually solder pins on. Okay, no, it's quite hard to see, but you'll see. Let's get some better light on this. You'll see there from left to right, you've got reset, SCK. Uh, miss the voltage one, MI, MO and ground and they're connected to my Arduino board. And I've used the colours that I saw in a diagram. Uh, but anyway, start from number 10. You've got then green, green, let's, uh, let's item, we'll name them. Green is reset, yellow is mossy, purple is missy, blue is SCK and black is ground. I've also used the IDE software to upload the programmer to the UNO board. And to do that, you just go file at the top left here and go to, where is it? Examples, see examples there? And then select Arduino. Do that again, file, examples. And we're selecting Arduino ISP. And then you just go over to the where it says sketch. Of course, you need your just your Uno board connected via USB. Then you right click device manager. Get your port so you know what your port is. Mine is COM6. And so go sketch. Then you just click upload. OK, uh, I've already done that. So I'm not going to do it again. And that makes your UNO board the uh, a programmer. Then you connect the cables just like I showed you to your device. Like I said, you do not turn on the power, you don't add power, nothing. But I've got the switch flicked up so that the device would effectively be turned off as well. That's part of the instructions I've got. So once you're connected, then you download the, the folder or the, yeah, the Arduino IDE file that's been sent to me by the manufacturer. And you have to create a folder. I mean, he sent me two, one for turning the, the encoder forward and one for reverse. So then you have to rename the file. Let's have a look here, I don't want to get it wrong. BD4IGH-1.02W or if it's forward encoder, then it's F. So that's what we've got here. We've got this file and then within it, if we double click, we get all the, you know, all the, the, the nice bit, which is what we need. Double click the IDE folder. And if, if it says to you, you need to create a file, then you haven't created the right file name. So once you get to this point, it should actually be quite simple really, but I'm getting this error. So I'm hoping that someone in the community can show me why I'm getting the error. So we've got this and you can scroll down and have a look at, you know, I'm not a coder, I'm not a writer. I'm uh, Rob from G, GWARDI is having a look at this as well because he does write bespoke versions of this. Um, so all you do then is go to, once you've got everything, go to, just quickly go tools, programmer, just make sure that is Arduino ISP at the top. And then you go sketch and we have a quick look at the code. So if just in case someone wants to see it, I'm just going to scroll down. I can send it anyway. I'll put all the links in. It's all there. It's very technical, codey, codey stuff for USDRs. So then you, you can make changes if you know what you're doing. Then you go sketch, upload programmer. It compiles the sketch and then this is the problem I'm getting. I'm getting an error straight away. And it says, and I've tried it with older um, ID and newer, but it basically says 
Comp compilation error, unsupported Arduino IDE version, use Arduino IDE 8.1. And I've actually tried 8.1 uh, or later. So that's what it says, but I've tried it. Uh, but it's still kicking up this error. So if someone got uh, has an idea of why it's doing that, please uh, please let me know, because we're going to need to learn to, you know, use these devices, update these devices. Of course, I'm going to send this to the manufacturer as well. Because we want to know anyone, any device that's been released on the market, we can use it. I think it's a nice looking device, very compact. There's room in there I've seen for a battery and a much bigger speaker. So I feel like it's got quite a lot of potential, but it's a very neat little package. It does remind me of another model that is similar. Yes, it's going to be a clone, but that's just the way it is now, isn't it? Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Bye for now.